here we need to find a point that lies on a particular sphere that is farthest from a given point in space here. So farthest from the point 1, negative 1, 1. Now we can see what our um, constraint is because we have basically if g of x, y, and z is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, then saying we have to be on the sphere is saying that g of x, y, z is equal to the constant 4. So we, we've got our function g. Now what we need to do is to um, maximize the distance from the point 1, negative 1, 1. So let's calculate that distance since we need to maximize it. If you have a point on the sphere, then the distance to this point is going to be the x-coordinate minus 1 squared plus the y-coordinate minus minus 1 squared plus the z-coordinate minus 1 squared all underneath the square root. That's the distance. Now actually, since square root is an order-preserving function, then the bigger the number, the bigger the square root will be. So if I could just maximize what's under the square root, that will automatically maximize the distance. So that would just be a little bit easier in computing the derivatives. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set my function that I'm going to optimize to just be what's under the square root. If I make what's under the square root as big as possible, then the distance will be as big as possible. OK, as big as possible subject to this constraint. Huh? Now the condition to have an extreme point is that the gradients have to be aligned. And the gradient of f is 2x minus 2. And the it's 2x minus 2 comma, let's see, partial with respect to y would be 2y plus 2. And partial with respect to z would be 2z minus 2. So there's the gradient of f. That's got to be some scalar lambda times the gradient of g, which is 2x, 2y and 2z. And these gives, give me um, three equations. 2x minus 2 is equal to 2 lambda x. And 2y plus 2 is equal to 2 lambda y. And 2z minus 2 is equal to 2 lambda z. Now the first thing I notice is that I could divide through by 2 in each equation. That would make this x minus 1 equals just lambda x and y plus 1 equals lambda y and uh, let's see z minus 1 equals lambda z now I can solve each of these equations for lambda the first one says lambda is um, let's see x minus 1 over x would be 1 minus 1 over x the second one says lambda is uh, 1 plus 1 over y and the third one says that uh, lambda is 1 minus 1 over z now in order to do that, I'm assuming that um, x is not 0, y is not 0, and z is not 0. But then if x was 0, I would have negative 2 equals 0, which is impossible. If y was 0, I'd have 2 equals 0, which is also impossible. And if z was 0, I'd have negative 2 equals 0, which is impossible. So, um, so that would mean that, uh, that it's OK for me to solve for lambda in this way. So equating the first two, since th this is equal to lambda and that's equal to lambda, 1 minus 1 over x and 1 plus 1 over y have to be the same. That says if you subtract 1 from both sides, negative 1 over x has to be 1 over y, which would mean that um, y has to be the opposite of x. Now equating these two, um, we get um, that Let's see, 1 plus 1 over y is equal to 1 minus 1 over z. So 1 over y is equal to negative 1 over z. And solving for z here says um, z it is the opposite of y. And the opposite of y would be x. OK, so now I have um, an, an equation relating y to x and relating z to x. I can go and substitute it into my final constraint, which is that we have to be on the sphere. So g has to be equal to 4. But I know that y is the opposite of x, so y squared would be x squared. And I know that z is x, so z squared would be x squared. So we end up with 3x squared equals 4. That says that x x squared is 4 thirds. So that says x is plus or minus 2 over root 3. So now we can see the possible points here where we could have a max 
if we take x to be 2 over root 3, we know that z has to be x, so z has to be 2 over root 3, and then y has to be the opposite, so that's negative 2 over root 3. Another possibility is that if x is negative 2 over root 3, z is the same as x, and um, y is the opposite of x, so this is 2 over root 3. Now let's just calculate which one gives us the biggest distance from the point 1, negative 1, 1. So if I plug that into f, you can see that f of 2 root 3, negative 2 root 3, 2 root 3, is equal to, let's see, x minus 1 squared plus y plus 1 squared plus z minus 1 squared. So that would be 2 minus root 3 over root 3 squared plus negative 2 plus root 3 over 3 squared and then plus um, 2 minus uh, root 3 over um, oops, over root 3 squared. Okay, these are all going to be the same thing because even though this differs by a neg negative sign, when you square the negative it will go away. So we're going to get 3 times 2 minus root 3 squared all over 3, or 2 minus root 3 squared. If we do if we do the same thing, if we, if we plug this one into f, then um, we'll have the same sign with the subtracted number. So we'll have negative 2 minus root 3, and we'll have um, 2 plus root 3 over root 3, and negative 2 minus root 3. So in that case, if we plug that function into f, f of negative 2 over root 3, 2 over root 3 and negative 2 over root 3, um, we end up getting 2 plus root 3 squared. Okay, both of these numbers are positive, but this one's bigger than that one. So when I square this one, I get more than when I square that one. So this distance is the furthest from my point 1, negative 1, 1. And this point is the closest here. Now, just um, to illustrate, I parameterized the line between um, this point on the sphere and this point here off the sphere. And I also parameterized this line, and I plotted them with the sphere in uh, in Maple. So we can look at look at that plot here. We have. Um, this plot creates, I parameterize the sphere, this plot creates the, the plot of uh, the sphere, and this plot creates the line, I made it black, that's the, that's the line from the closest point on the sphere to the point, and this is the line from the furthest point on the sphere. So if we look at, um, here's our point 1, negative 1, 1, and here's that closest point on the sphere, and the black line joins them just so you can see the distance between the two, and then over on the opposite side of the sphere, there's the point that's the furthest away from our point at 1, negative 1, 1. So just a little visualization to kind of show you that our technique did work to find um, the closest and furthest points from the point 1, negative 1 that lay on that sphere.